Well, hello guys and welcome back to another episode on the Saga channel. Today we're going to talk about my top 10 favorite dives of all time. 3,000 dives in, uh, over 15 years as a diver. Which dives do I think blew my mind? That's what we're gonna talk about today. But first, if you like scuba diving content, then you should definitely subscribe to the channel and maybe like the video. It does help the channel in a huge way. So guys, before we get started, quick disclaimer, this is my personal uh, top 10 of dives that I've done, right? There are places I haven't been to yet, um, Galapagos to name one, which I'm sure would be in this top 10. So this is not like, hey, visit these 10 places. Of all the dives I've done, which ones left for some reason a deep impact on me? That's what we're going to talk about. A lot of these dives you've, you've probably seen on this channel if you're a subscriber already because I often review those dives separately uh, and the first one you can actually find a video somewhere deep down buried it's the Zenobia wreck in Cyprus. Um, the Zenobia is a pretty big wreck 300 feet long and simply capsized in the harbor of Larnaca. It's massive. Uh, the top of it is 18 meters or 60 feet deep but the bottom goes as deep as 60 meters so it's uh, I only did two dives on it didn't even fully get to see the whole thing but it was definitely the biggest wreck that I've dived so far and also a wreck that's the result of, of literally an accident so for that reason it did leave uh, a bit of an impact conditions were pretty good very easy to see the wreck and uh, if you like wreck diving and if you want to dive you know a massive massive wreck that's tilted on its side with cargo scattered around i would recommend the zenobia in cyprus On number nine, I have the Marine Reserve El Toro in Mallorca. Does that mean that it is the ninth best spot to dive on the planet? Maybe not, but for the Mediterranean and for uh, an area that is traditionally so overfished, I think the El Toro Marine Reserve has a lot of wildlife to offer. And the reason that it spoke to me was because I didn't expect anything at all. I expected Mediterranean diving, rocks basically and um, the El Toro Marine Reserve is a very good example of what happens when you implement a marine reserve how wildlife can actually bounce back there's massive schools of barracudas there's tons of octopus nudibranch so um, for me personally I was just really surprised by it and I think if you're from Europe or if you're in Europe and you want to do some good diving go to Mallorca find the El Toro Marine Reserve and you'll be surprised of the quality of diving you can actually get in the Mediterranean. Number eight, Silfra in Iceland. So the crack between the American and the Eurasian continental plates. Um, you might think I maybe would put it higher. The reason I put it here is because it's a little bit of a one trick pony. I mean, once you've seen it, that, that's really it. The surroundings are gorgeous. Uh, it is obviously uh, cold. We, we were just around freezing uh, temperature wise. Um, and so definitely dry suit dive. Uh, the visibility is what it's most known for, for, for being near endless. It's pristine visibility. It's definitely an adventure. But towards the end of the dive, after you've kind of touched, you know, the both sides of um, the tectonic plates it really just becomes kind of a sandy pond dive and there really isn't much there so i'm happy i did it if given the opportunity i would maybe do it again i don't know if i'd go out of my way to go there and do that dive but if you haven't yet maybe put it on your bucket list and do it at least once 
That's why it's on my eighth spot. On number seven, I have Tacbelum. Tacbelum is a cenote in Mexico. It's a little bit lesser known uh, and one that actually surprised me as well. I had zero expectations. I love cenote diving and there's actually one more cenote on this list. Um, but I, I didn't expect anything and the entrance is really creepy, spooky. Almost an episode of Stranger Things where they enter the upside down. Um, the difference between this cenote and most other ones is that it keeps growing, so a lot of the um, a lot of the the matter inside is actually organic and keeps growing. So it looks a little bit like the whole cenote is alive. It's an extremely creepy dive. I, I don't have that much footage of it because it was also very dark and hard to really capture it, but it left a really deep uh, impression on me because of how creepy it really was. And I think if you if you like cavern diving, cave diving, cenote diving, and you want to kind of have a bit more of a, yeah, a creepy, spooky experience, Tak Belum, definitely worth checking out. On number six, and there's a whole video about that dive on this channel, which you can check out, is um, an, an airplane wreck. Uh, last year, we had an airplane crash here in uh, Utila, and um, in, as a dive by itself, it's a little bit whatever, it's a small Cessna airplane at 21 meters, about 70 feet. Um, but what's a bit crazy about it is that I've taken that plane several times in the past and to now see it on the bottom uh, of the ocean and being able to dive to it, luckily nobody got hurt. But it definitely was another one of those top 10 experiences for me. I never thought that I would be able to dive an airplane crash site like a real it wasn't planted it was a, this was a real accident and exploring that finding all the little bits and pieces the rudder i think there was a battery there uh you know the oxygen masks are deployed it's very very otherworldly and that's why it's in my top 10 favorite dives of all time Number five is one of my most recent dives. It was in the South Area Toll in the Maldives. Um, this crazy manta ray encounter. Uh, we had a reef manta who just came to the group and just started doing these somersaults as if he was showing off, just being there. And it's, I think it's really special when an animal just allows you to be there and it wants to be there. And there's a couple of minutes of just it's almost like sharing a moment together and nobody's chasing anybody. Everybody's just being there. Uh, I love capturing wildlife and, and I love just yeah having that moment and filming and nothing else. It's not invasive. There's nobody needs to do anything. And then the manta just leaves again. That was phenomenal.
On number four, we're back in Honduras um, and it's one of my personal favorite dive sites. Uh, I call it Space Mountain. I have Space Mountain and I have the Himalayas. They're deep dive sites and I really like them because um, they're only accessible by Trimix, which is one of my passions. I, I really do like the deeper exploration dives and I can't quite describe it if you haven't been there, but it does feel like diving on the moon. It is dark basically nighttime, 100 meters deep, 330 feet. It takes a lot of planning. It's very complex. It's very challenging. It's physically demanding. But those dives every time leave such a deep impression on me because that is to me what scuba diving is about. It's on the one hand being able to be in contact with nature, but on the other hand also doing what us humans do, explore, discover, and nothing makes me feel more like an astronaut than these deep wall dives and specifically Utila is known for those deep walls especially on the north side and it's every time again I come away from it re-energized, rejuvenated in my passion for scuba diving. Number three is a uh, dive that I did in the Azores uh, off of Pico Island. Uh, it's a blue shark encounter dive. And um, again, similar to the manta ray dive that I mentioned earlier, it's just so fun when you get to spend time with an animal and it's not spooked, it's not aggressive, it's not shy. It just hangs out, hangs around you, inspects you, you inspect it. There's no touching, there's no, um, you know, there's, there's no forced encounter of any kind. Um, but if, if you do want to dive with wildlife in Europe, I think the Azores are the place to be. Um, it, I never expected it. Again, it was, it was one of those, I'm sure you can go to Galapagos and see tons more sharks and hammerheads and whatnot, but it was such an unexpected place to have such intimate encounters with sharks. And for me, that dive is forever in my memory as, as almost, yeah, like a solid hour just with sharks there. Beautiful, loved it. On number two, I have Cenote Angelita in Mexico. And I know that it's really bold <laughs> to put that dive, which is a sinkhole dive, on my second favorite dive I've ever done of all the 3,000 dives I've ever done. I think the reason is because I, I looked so forward to it. I had it so built up in my head from images before uh, of the sulfur cloud and the fact that it's just a little pond, like a little sinkhole in the jungle. Um, it's, it's not super ornate. There's, there's not that much overhang, so it's not even really like a, a, a very cavernous kind of dive, but how it sits just in the jungle very quietly and how you can just dive down super clear water until you reach the sulfur cloud, I think it's magical. I think, still think it's magical every time. Now, I have a video where I rank my top five, I think, cenote dives, I'll link it below, and it doesn't even, end up on my top one. There are nicer cenotes, but we're talking about dives that left the most profound impression on me. And I remember sort of being, you know, alone in the Mayan underground. I thought it was amazing. I loved it. And if you are in the region, you should definitely check it out. Now, if you want to go, to the cenotes then i actually recommend signing up for a saga trip we have one this november i will put all the details below everybody's welcome you do not need to be cave certified you don't need cave experience it's a cavern trip so you do need some diving experience of course but everybody's welcome and we are definitely going to cover angelita on that trip And on number one, my favorite dive of all time is the um, Princess Alice Seamount dive, uh, again in the Azores in Portugal. So Azores is twice in my top three actually, which says something about the quality of diving there. And 
I loved it because you really have to work to get there. It's a three hour ride on a dinghy out into the blue. Azores is already in the middle of the Atlantic. The island of Pico is then one of the most remote ones and then it's a further three hours out. So it's, it's really quite uh, remote from anywhere. That alone, you know, the expedition nature, again, left a really deep impression on me. But then also the fact that off of this sea mount, um, these uh, mobularis are come up to feed. And again, there's, you'll see the video, some encounters that were just so personal, so close, so, um, they were they were really inspecting us they were really taking the time to see who we were what we were doing and um for me the, the combination of how unexpectedly beautiful that dive was but also how hard we had to work some people were seasick some people were maybe a little bit worried about how remote it was and the payoff for that dive um, to me it's the perfect combination of exploration and adventure but also wildlife encounter and the reason that I dive. So that's my personal top 10 dives so far. Obviously there's much more to do, you should subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out because uh, we do dive trips multiple times per year uh, and again everybody's welcome next trip Mexico uh, in November. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.